Welcome to Liberty Explained, your guide to libertarianism. My name is Chris Spangle, and our goal is to share libertarian solutions for the future with you and create a great resource that you can share with your friends. Please spread the word. Visit libertyexplained.com to subscribe to this podcast and to search out a library of issues and book recommendations. My co-host for this podcast are Julia Geyer and Levy Rainey, stuck in New Jersey, and the other is living free down in southern Georgia. <laughs> we'll let you guess which one. You'll have to go back <laughs> to the past episode. So on this episode, uh, we're going to talk about is libertarianism more a mindset or a set of values? I feel like before we even dive into this question, I want to I want to break the actual question down itself. What does that mean? A mindset versus a set of values. What are the differences there? If you were to if you were to guess, how would you articulate it? Um, it they they're very similar in my mind. Right. Like, I don't know how to differentiate the two. Yeah. So I the way that I took this question, which was solicited by libertarians from listeners, um, you know, there's principles and there's values and there's morals and there's ethics and there there's like the you know. Morals are, for instance, your personal set of value, your personal set of moral principles, right? You know, ethics are how you interact with the world using those morals. So ethics usually comes into play in workplaces, right? Like there's journalistic ethics. You, If you're a journalist, you don't do these things. These are professional rules that aren't law, but you abide by those ethics. And that's then you don't violate that because of your own personal morals. You know, so a mindset to me is sort of like a paradigm. So, you know, how how do you how do you just kind of blindly operate in the world without thought, right? Like, what's that first? Like, my first instinct is that that first mindset is always going to be, you know, typical of you know my my white male entitlement is very high. I will be honest with you, you know. But then, you know. As a value, I say, all right, I don't want to be selfish. I need to think about others. So I need to check that mindset of X, Y, and Z. You know? So is your mindset absent of your set of values? It, it, it all plays into it, right? So like my, my natural mindset is somebody that is fairly patient. But that's also a value I hold, you know, and I, I probably your 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 base instinct is often informing your values and helping you set what's important. OK. So that's sort of uh, how I took this question. And, and, and the mindset to me was more like, you know, just how you you typically will think about something. Julia, do you do you agree with that? Like, you know, are we overthinking it? What do you want to weigh in at all? Um. Actually, my, my Wi-Fi cut out when you first started talking for a few seconds, but I caught the end of what you were saying. Um, I think I got most of what you said. I, 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 think, I think your values inform your mindset, but I think that, you know, your mindset, I think you carry it closer to here where your values are like, more in the back of your mind and <laughs> like your your mindset is more of like the forefront of your mind like you said your instant gut reaction um but they go hand in hand you know they're they're connected your your mindset normally is not very different from your values i would say so that's why i sort of like answer this question with it's sort of both yeah so libertarianism really extends on it focuses on extending your personal morality and ethics into organizing society at large, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that it's right to hit people. So why would I want to take that force that I don't believe in personally and say the government doing that is okay, right? The, the morality doesn't change because 800,000 people voted on it. So, you know, we want essentially the the rules that we were taught as kids to be followed uh, and extended to societal organization so don't hit their, hit others and don't take their stuff so the government really is organized around the premise that if enough people agree these things are okay and if voters collectively decide to murder or steal from other individuals with 51 percent of the vote then they believe the morality changes libertarians don't so you know, enacting these values of don't hit, don't steal, don't take people's stuff requires a mindset shift 
And that mindset, that mental shift, I think a lot of times is really hard for people to grab onto, Julia, when you've lived under a different paradigm your entire life. The, the, the anthem is playing and the flag is waving in the background and the founders were the godly people. And what do you mean that the government as a whole is really an immoral, uh, an immoral institution? It, it really is. A, a, unless that idea has been introduced to you before, and, and likely introduced to you many times in your life. It's, a, it's, a, it's an extreme and wild departure from what people, from what the majority of people, the way they view government and its role in society. So it's, um, it, it takes a long time. I don't wanna say it takes a long time, but it's like a, you have to plant the seed and let that seed grow. It doesn't happen right away. And it is something that's like, um, it's a wild concept for a lot of people, definitely. Yeah, and I think the more people examine their values through this new way of thinking, the more empowering libertarianism becomes. And as individuals begin to think about taking responsibility for their lives and their communities, they get excited about the new opportunities that they they kind of, uh, that it affords. So, yeah. Um, you know, we, we talked about the shopping cart in a previous episode and, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, you, you purchase an item, you take the cart out to the parking lot, you unload the groceries. And once the cart is empty, you have a, a choice, right? They can leave the cart in the middle of the parking spot to inconvenience the next parker. You know, the employee corralling carts has to walk over, although Julia considers it job creation. You know, or you can put the cart in the corral in the place that the property owner wants you to put it and maintain order. Now, you know, some don't. I do 50% of the time. Julia never does it. Levy does it all the time. Some don't. The market has a fix for these bad actors, quote unquote. They employ a corraller. And other stores like Aldi's use financial incentives to persuade individuals to act in a responsible manner. So suppose, you know, and, and and Levy, do you remember the argument that I used about armed security guards? Well, you're talking more about like societal pressure, right? You don't want to get in trouble in front of your friends. You don't want to right. be reprimanded. And that can be a higher pressure than actual aggressive force put on you. Exactly. So if they hire armed security guards to threaten any person not returning the cart, it makes you less likely to go to that store. It would cost the store business. So the government often operates this way and it rejects that peaceful path used by all the monopolizes force. So in other words, puts all the other stores out of business and takes them over and standardizes the more violent approach. And so we tend to advocate for that more peaceful path by reminding individuals the, of their personal responsibilities, their right to be left alone and providing solutions through the marketplace to handle a lot of these complex problems. Right. And I, I think there's something that's important to consider when we talk about the peaceful path that libertarians always prefer is that the perfect peaceful path is one that's in someone's self-interest, you know? So um, let's say a, a grocery store was like, you know what, like we really want people to return carts. We don't want to employ someone to be like corralling carts anymore. Let's give them a $2 discount when they return their cart. They get a ticket. When they come back next time, they get a coupon. You know what I mean? Uh, solutions like that are um, ideal because it's a win-win. The company saves money. The customer saves money. The carts get put back, you know? So there's always like a peaceful um, win-win solution that can be that can be used instead of force. Levy, you have that look on your face. Yeah, Levy, yeah, what? Yeah, <laughs> that was actually perceptive. This is kind of, this is off topic. This is veering off topic. But so many people see the path, like the peaceful path, the peaceful alternative as the route of, um, of weakness. And I feel like that's something that America is built on is force. And we want to be like the powerhouse and taking the peaceful path, giving people financial incentives to return their shopping cart. That's the least powerful position to take. Like, how do you argue that with people, you know? Well, that was actually the, I, I would say the inverse is true. So America was really founded on libertarian principles. 
in that it wanted a capitalist system, a, a free market system, maybe not capitalist, but free market. And they wanted to constrain the amount of force used in the society to control people's behaviors. They didn't want to have a lot of those tools available. And so, you know, it was a negative charter of liberties. And that means that the, the constitution and the founding of the country and the way that it was set up was there to say what the government cannot do. And it's limited to just these things. And it's just to protect people's rights, which means you can't hit people. You can't take their stuff. You can't lie to them, defraud them. You can't interfere. Uh, you know, they looked at what happened in other countries and they said, we don't want a strong central state to come in like a king and rule over people. And so they created a what essentially was a free market, low impact, self-governing society. And and it was built on market pla market based solutions and not central planning. Meaning if you have a problem and you you recognize that other people have this problem, you coordinate peacefully through the marketplace, trade goods, trade labor, trade uh, knowledge and create some solution to the product through a service or a good. And that created the most powerful country in the history of the world. And it wasn't through by projecting its force onto other nations. I'd argue that once America took on the role of being the policeman of the world and projecting its force militarily into other countries and 193 countries, we have gone downhill since then. And as we've, we've walked walk towards central planning, walked towards a federalization, walked towards militarization, and walk towards that federal government. We've become much weaker because the world we're living in in September of 2020, as we face this election, for those of you who are far in the future, we hope it works out better because it feels terrible right now. Um, the There are a lot of people who feel that everything is life or death depending on who wins this election. That's not how the founders wanted it. They wanted there to be a contentious election to keep those factions. They wanted the factions to fight with each other yeah. and pick on each other with limited power. So these self-interested men and women at the top pick on each other over, over really not much power because the, the personality that's attracted to politics is just going to be there, right? While the rest of us operate society, plan society without government intervention. So I'd say that removing the force would return America to the prosperity and the harmony that we found through a lot of the country until really the 20th century. Okay. So, all right. Well, with that, we want to thank you so much for listening to Liberty Explained. Please go to libertyexplained.com and check out the website and make sure that you uh, share this with a friend. Uh, Levy, Julia, thank you so much for joining me. Thank, thank you for guys. having me.